Hello. As some of you might know, I'm currently building a new laser device that's using a very high power uh, diode laser. And in building this device, I've come across a very interesting problem um, that I want to discuss in this video. And I want to show you how I solved this problem. So while researching this, this topic and trying to solve this problem, I learned quite a lot of stuff about optics and lasers that might be interesting to you, even if you aren't lasing, uh, building a laser device like this. So if, even if you aren't, this video might be interesting for you. Okay, let's go right into it. Okay, so first I'll describe what the problem actually is. Now, I was trying to focus this laser here um, over a very long focal length, about uh, 250 millimeters, so 25 centimeters, that's something about 10 inches in uh, American units. And this just, this doesn't work. Um, at first I tried to use a um, normal collimator lens. Now, if you have a diode here, a laser diode basically, that looks something like this. Got three pins, got the laser diode here. Then we've got the beam, which is quite divergent actually. It's not uh, parallel as you can see. Um, so a collimator lens basically is a lens or a system of lenses that, I'll just draw it as one lens here, which is not correct, but uh, anyways, that um, parallelizes the beam, right? So the beam is going to be like this, so parallel. And this collimator lens in here will um, not do quite that, but actually focus it on one spot, uh, which is the, the focal point, basically, at which the, all the light is focused on, which, on one point and the energy density is very high. And you know, I thought that this should be the solution that shouldn't be a problem, basically, right? We've got the focal length here, and I just said, well, this is uh, 250 millimeters. And yeah, that actually did not work quite as I expected it to. I actually had a, another collimator unit in here, which would focus the laser beam onto a focus point in, with a focal length of about, you know, what, two, uh, two to five centimeters. So about five centimeters, so two inches. And that actually would work very well. It was a very, very fine spot, circular in shape, very perfect. But, um, on this long focal length, it just wouldn't work. And you can see here what I mean. So this is a very defocused spot. As you can see, it's not very, it's not very focused in one spot. The energy density is very, or well, it's, it's relatively low because we've got such a big surface area on the burn here. As you can see on this, um, progression here basically I focused it and as you can see it gets more and more oval in shape right but here it's it's rel relatively circular and here it's relatively oval more oval and here it's even basically a line right so this is the most focused that the beam could be and um, this spot it's, it's not a spot it's a line basically this has two problems you know the the spot looks like this and this is this has two problems first of all well the the energy density is is not as high as it could be right if we have this energy this area focused in one spot or a rectangle that's a lot higher energy density so it would do engraving uh, much better um, so that's one problem and the other problem is if you want to do this for engraving uh, that doesn't really work because it would basically engrave like a calligraphy pen, right? Wouldn't have, um, or a rectangle would look something like this engraved, you know, because in, in one uh, direction it's, it's fine, but in the other it's, it's really not. So like a, a calligraphy pen. And that's a problem. So I need to, to solve this. And at first we have to actually know why this is happening, why this 
uh, is not a spot, but a um, stripe. And to do this, we actually have to know how the laser dart actually looks inside. And I've actually taken apart a laser diode before and I'll insert a picture in, in here, I don't know, so you can actually see how the shape of the laser is. And basically, the, the shape of the laser is something like this. You've got a, some kind of um, semiconductor, which is basically why it's a semiconductor laser, a diode laser. And then you've got some kind of um, contact thing and a bit of a wire here. And the laser exit looks something like this. Oh, this is, these are some, some layers here. Um, and this is the exit, where the laser exits. I'll just zoom in here a little bit. And this looks an awful lot like the, the shape that we actually saw. And that's actually the, the reason, you know. I've um, got a flashlight here which, you know, has a round lens, basically. Oh, that's, it's not a good example because the light actually is uh, a rectangle, but, you know, whatever. So the, the flashlight is round, so it has a round, round spot, basically, right? And a CO2 laser, which has a laser tube, is round as well. It has a round resonator. And that's why the spot is perfectly round. But in here we've got a rectangular emitter, a rectangular resonator. And um, that actually uh, is the reason why we've got a, got a spot that's, that looks like this. Now the shape is actually not in, the, uh, in this direction. It's actually 90 degrees to this. And I'm not really good at drawing, so I'll just insert a picture that I found online that really dis describes this. So um, basically because of this, we've got a, um, a shape that's really oval and not circular like it should be. Now this problem actually isn't that noticeable on short distances because the divergence is, is not that high and the colometer lens has no problem focusing it down to a, to a spot. But on very high distances, which we have here, you know, 250 millimeters, quite a high distance for a colometer like this, or for a, for a laser diode which with this high power, um, Another thing here, this, this actually is not a problem in, in low power laser diodes. So a normal laser pointer has a quite um, circular shape, which most of you will probably know. But uh, the higher the laser power, the more this is a problem. And I'm not uh, exactly sure why, but um, you know, anyways. Um, yeah, so we need to kind of get this shape here round. And if we think about this a while, we could probably, you know, if we have a coordinate system like this, this is x and this is y, we could stretch this along the x-axis. So if we do this, we get, if we stretch this uh, enough, we get a uh, circle, right? We could of course just um, stretch this in the other direction in, in y, so we get something like uh, this. No, but uh, Either way, we, we get a, a circle. So one way of uh, stretching light like this in only one direction, remember we only want this in, in one direction, um, is using this kind of pair of anamorphic prisms. So these look like this from the, uh, from the top. And I'll just draw something to illustrate this. And we get a beam that's coming from here now that has some kind of diameter and this gets bent in the, in the prism and gets um, reflected from here to here. And because this distance here is uh, longer than this distance, we get a more, uh, you know, remember this, we've got a bigger diameter of the beam, you know, like this. So this diameter, D2, is actually larger than the incoming diameter. So um, anyways, this kind of pair of anamorphic prisms actually uh, enlarges the beam in just one direction. And this is actually what we want, right? We want to 
stretch the beam in one direction. So we'll just have to make sure that um, focus, please. We have to make sure that um, the beam or the, the diode laser is actually aligned to these prisms in such a way that the uh, you know in, in this case here, if we want to stretch this along the x-axis, that the x-axis is actually you know kind of like this, and y is coming towards us. Right, and this is basically what I did here. Um, I'll just have to glue this once I'm. Oops, sorry. I'll have to glue this once I'm done. I'll just lay that in here. Yeah, like this. Now we got the same same thing basically here. We've got a beam in here, then we've got the two anamorphic prisms and they actually reshape the beam so the beam is uniform and yeah let's let's just um, see this in action so you can actually see this and not have the theory in our way all right so I don't know whether you can hear me I'll just talk very close to the microphone um, so I've got the laser hooked up and I've got the camera behind, behind this glass here, this acrylic glass, so you can actually see the laser beam, because that would be way too bright otherwise. And um, I'm just going to focus, and I'm going to activate the laser very shortly, so you can actually, yeah, very shortly, so that the laser beam doesn't overwhelm the camera. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think you can see what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So the laser beam definitely is not a spot, but rather a bar. And we'll have to fix that using the uh, prisms. Right, so let's um, see whether the prisms actually do their job. As you can see, we've got a pretty uniform square there. As you can see, even though this is a very high power laser, it's not burning the paper because the energy density is very low because it's a very big spot, right? And another thing, of course, because uh, we've got some optics in here, we get some reflections and uh, other stuff, but the main, main power actually is in this, in this spot here. Right. Okay, so now we've got the uniform square. You know, it's not a big problem whether this is a square or a circle. It's just, it just needs to be uniform. So now we need to get this, you know, big kind of square onto a very fine dot, basically, or basically um, focus the square. Well, and that can be done using a focusing lens, right? So we've got this kind of lens here that's um, focusing the, the beam. And this has a focal distance or focal length, basically, of 250 millimeters. So exactly what we want. So I'll just screw this on here. And then we will focus the square that we saw onto a very small square. And this uh, increases the energy density very, very vastly. And we'll have to, and we'll be able to engrave. Now, before we do that, I'll just um, answer a question that might come up in a few of you, and that's um, well, we've got a collimator lens in here that focuses, and we've got the prism, so this this should be focusing um, just fine without the lens, right? No, I thought this as well, and I tried to actually do this. And it actually does not work. Um, I'll just I'll just show you. Now again, um, one might think that um, well we've got a square here, right? That's a relatively uniform square. Um, so, and we've got a collimator lens in here, in the laser. So, if we just increase the distance, we should get a smaller, smaller square, right? And this looks pretty well right now 
And if we increase the distance to what we actually want, this actually isn't a square anymore. You can't actually see it, but it's it's a rectangle. Okay, here we are. It's, it's hard to handle all these things at the same time. So I've focused the collimator lens to the um, highest energy density possible, and as you can see, that is definitely not a spot, right? So that's that's really weird. And let me just switch that off. And the reason for that actually is that um, in this in this prism setup here, we actually changed the divergence of uh, one um, axis of the laser profile. So if you've got uh, this thing here and um, we want to expand this by the x direction, we actually change the divergent divergence of the x direction. And now we've got a beam that's, well, we've got a square right in front of the prisms, but the square has some has one divergence in one direction and another divergence in the other direction. So it's not gonna stay square, right? It's gonna turn in, in, in a different square, in a different shape. And that just happens to be a rectangle. So we actually need to change that. And you no. Know, the way to do this is just a lens, because if we poke, uh, position this in here, um, we just have we have a very uniform divergence. You know that's basically a round uh, lens, right? It has a uh, the same divergence in all directions, or convergence in this case, because it's fo it's a focusing lens. And oops, and that's actually the the reason why this lens has to be very. Um, near the, the prisms, because if it was here, then um, the beam shape here wouldn't be a square anymore, it would be a slight rectangle. So it's better to have the lens very, very near of the, the prisms, so that we get a near perfect square that we actually focus down. All right, let's do it. All right, here we are. I've got this set up. Everything is now focused and I'll just Zoom in here. Focus points. There we are. I'll just activate this very shortly. As you can see, this is now a very circular spot. And also you can see that the paper actually turns uh, brown instantly. Like, it's brown instantly. And um, that's because the energy density is so high. Alright, let's take a close look at this spot we just made. Okay, here we are. So, as you can see, we've got the spot that we actually had first with just the collimator lens. And as you can see, this is, you know, not round. And these are the... and, and of course, it's a quite a big spot. That, of course, um, depends on how long the uh, laser is on, so of course the longer the laser is on, the more the paper is going to burn, so... Anyways, and as you can see, this is the spot that uh, we made using the prisms and the lens. And this is very circular, you know, this is the spot with just a very small uh, laser duration. As you can see, these are quite acceptable. Alright, so that's basically what we wanted. So let's just uh, recap what we actually talked about in this video. Ah, before we do that, just some, some small remarks. As you can see, this is actually, you can actually turn this. Let me just uh, screw this a little bit more tightly. Um, you can actually uh, screw, rotate these platforms. It actually takes quite a lot of force to do that, but um, this is just to adjust the, uh, the optics slightly, if something is not aligned correctly. And you may ask yourself, why is this there? And that's basically just for a small mirror, because um, I haven't got much space in the machine, so the uh, beam will actually have to be redirected 90 degrees to the um, other optics. So yeah, it's just a just a little mirror prism in here, but that's not uh, part of this video. Another small thing: laser safety, very important, and this is why I've been wearing these kind of laser goggles all the time when um, experimenting with the laser. Alright, let's recap. 
All right, I've got our situation um, doodled down here. And as you can see, we've got the beam shape that's coming from the collimator lens. And, you know, as, if, as we've seen in, uh, in our experiment, this is a bar. And this kind of bar is really unfortunate when you want to engrave or even cut stuff with a laser. So we actually need to shape this beam. And we do this with the anamorphic prism pair which is just uh, stretching this uh, in uh, x direction to obtain a uh, beam shape that's fairly regular in x y direction. So, well, a square is perfectly symmetric in x and y direction, which is what we want. And then we use the lens to actually focus this square down to a very small square, or a very small spot in this case. And yeah, that's basically what um, we wanted. And this is actually the only way, or one of the very few ways to focus a high power laser diode or di diode laser um, on a very um, far point, you know, with a high uh, focal distance. And you can't just use a collimator lens, which is uh, the problem that I had and solved with this. You know, and um, you might ask yourself, why wouldn't you just um, scale down in y direction, right? Would be possible as well. And yes, that, that would definitely be possible. You actually would have to um, flip the, the prisms around. Um, but I mean, then you would get a square and you had to would have to focus the focus it using the lens. So it's basically no difference. It doesn't doesn't really matter too much. Uh, yeah, so this is the way I chose to do it. Alright, thank you for watching and I hope you found this video interesting and learned a little bit on the way. If you want to see what this little uh, contraption here actually will become, just um, subscribe to this channel and I'll post a video about this machine here in, I don't know, once I finish this in, in a few weeks or months, I don't know what kind of problems I'll run into next. So, yeah. If you like this video, please give this a like and maybe even subscribe to the channel. Thank you and bye.